Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jeremy Snodgrass, youth pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. This morning, uh, I want to speak to you on the subject of reflection. And a few weeks ago, I, had, I talked to the youth group um, just and challenged them in the area of reflecting and how, how do they reflect Christ and what does their life look like. And we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11 this morning. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Let's read that. It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, who in here has some encouragement about being a Christian. Come on. Who in here has been encouraged about being united to Christ? Who in here once was steeped in sin, but now has been delivered? Come on. Has been delivered and set free because you're united with Jesus Christ. And it says, if you have any comfort from his love, any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness or compassion, come on, how many have been in those moments where you've received that from God? Come on, how many have been in those, you're, you're at the lowest of the lowest, but it was only God that got you through. Not what anybody else said, not, not what anybody else gave you, but it was only the comfort of God's presence with you that got you through. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about today? And so we see this, and it goes on. And it says, then make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. And then it goes and it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Today as we look and we read the scripture in Philippians chapter 2, the scripture gives us a reflection of what we should look like. And I love this. I love um, you know, I just love how the Word of God just speaks to us. Come on now. I said, how many knew that? How many know that God knew what He was doing when He put the Word of God together? Come on now. And I love how He speaks to us, and He just begins to challenge us. And really, uh, Philippians chapter two, uh, the first part, is a reminder of who God is—a reminder of what God has brought us through, what God has done for us. And we see this in the example, saying, "Who in here is received?" You know, love from God. Who in here has received that compassion, that tenderness that can only come from God? And then begins to challenge us to take that same love, that same compassion, put yourself aside just as Christ put himself aside and show others and reflect Jesus Christ in this world. And this is what Philippians chapter 2 is talking about, a challenge for us. We see what Christ has done. In our life, I know many of you just a second ago raised their hand, testified, yes, I can testify what God has done for me, how God has got me through. You know, there's a lot of things in this world as we live, there's a lot of things that just stink. I don't know. We, how many know we live in a broken world? We live in a broken world, and the world will remain broken until that day when Jesus Christ makes everything new. But until that day... We live in a broken world. And I know in my life, I've got so many testimonies throughout my life of how God has got me through, how God has delivered me, how God has just been merciful to me. You know, on October the 13th of this year, Thursday, October 13th, that Thursday night, I was uh, talking to my, my dad on the phone. And I was just like... Uh, uh, we were planning our, our first hunting trip of the year. We were going to go bow hunting together. And uh, so that next Thursday, uh, the kids were off school and stuff, and we were 
Um, I didn't have to take the kids to school. And so my dad was going to come and drive, and uh, we were going to go hunting uh, that, next, uh, that next Thursday. And that Friday morning, I came into work. Uh, you know, it wasn't too, too much past the time that I got there. Matter of fact, that morning, I called my dad twice just because I knew he was hunting with my nephew. And I always talked to my dad. Even it don't matter if we're neither one of us were hunting, we always talk to each other on the phone, even when he's up in the stand and saying, hey, Have you seen anything? You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, going back and forth, No, I haven't seen anything yet. And then, you know, just going back and forth. And so even when I was at work, I was still hunting with my dad. How many know what I'm talking about there? And so um, we're doing, I try to call my dad a couple times. And uh, then I get a phone call from uh, uh, my older sister. Now, my older sister had just uh, adopted um, a newborn baby. And uh, she called, and she was hysterical on the phone. I could not understand what she was saying. I didn't know what was going on. How many of those phone calls are not good? Come on. Those phone calls are not good. Couldn't understand what was going on. And my first thought was that something had happened uh, to my baby niece, Jayla. And I, I mean, the way she was so hysterical. And then the, finally, the only thing that I could get from her is that there are they're doing CPR on dad. That's the only thing that I could get out. And so got off the phone um, with her and called my wife and said, hey, there's something going on. Um, you know, please come, come, come here. I'm, I'm need you. And sorry. And it wasn't uh, but a few minutes later that I get a phone call that my, uh, my dad's gone. And at that moment, my, so, I'm sorry, I didn't cry in the first service, but at that moment, my world completely changed. I was shook to my very core in realizing all in one moment that my life was now completely different. And many of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about that have lost loved ones, lost your parents, and you guys know exactly. And I was shook to my very core Knowing that I just can't believe it, I can't believe my dad's gone. He was my best friend. We did everything together from the time I was a little kid. We did everything together. But I want to tell you, even in the hardest, most difficult times of your life, Jesus Christ has always been there. He has never left. He has never left. He is holy. He is worthy. And he has never left you. He has never forsaken you. And even in the midst of complete devastation, where your life seems to fall apart, Jesus has always been there for us. Always. That's who our God is. That's why you say there's only one word to describe. He is holy, holy, holy. Because he has always been there with us. All through my life, I have seen God do incredible things. I've seen time after time where it didn't seem I could go on, but God was there to lift me up. This is what it's talking about. This is what God, if any of you have experienced encouragement, if any of you have experienced that comfort of God, that tenderness, that mercy that God has for you, to be of like-minded. Look at Jesus as an example and reflect what Jesus Christ has done in you. Reflect what Jesus Christ has done in you. There are so many people, even here today, if we were to have each individual today come and describe all that God has done in their life, then we would be here till tomorrow. Come on now. We would be here all day, all night, and into tomorrow if we had every individual come and begin to talk about what God has done in their life. You know, I think of people right now just here in the church. Um, I think of my, my future son-in-law, Josiah, who not long ago was walking into the emergency room, um, basically a dead man, not realizing that um, he had a blood clot. And if he hadn't been at the emergency room, when it happened, when the blood clot moved to his heart, um, he would be dead. And go in there, and they had to restart his heart twice. And, and to go and to see all of the suffering and pain he went through for such a long time, but to see God bring him through. Come on now. To see God bring him through. I think, you know, and man, praise God. I look at, we got some, uh, some great friends, some of our best friends that are here 
that have been with us this weekend. And uh, Rodney and Becky are their children's pastors in southern Indiana. And uh, and I I remember, wish I was there, but I remember getting a call when when Rodney was in the hospital, just having some pain and some different things, and ended up um, having cancer in his uh, appendix um, bursting. And if you guys know when your appendix bursts, that's not a good thing at all, and it's usually a 50-50 chance um, from that point. And to see what God walked Rodney through as he, as he went through his journey and went through chemo and went through the different things, uh, but yet he's here today and here today ministering, doing an incredible job ministering to the young people in his church in southern Indiana and discipling them and setting them. Say, man, praise God. Also, another Rodney just sitting right back there. Actually, he just stood up. There you go. He's waving at everybody. Rodney, just seeing somebody who's newly committed to Jesus Christ and seeing all that he's gone through with uh, quadruple bypass and just had another surgery this last Friday or Saturday um, to repair uh, some of his lung. To see all he's gone through, but yet still gives glory and testify to who Jesus is, that God is the one that got him through. How many have those testimonies in your life of, the, of things that come against you, but yet God has always been there? I thank God that he is merciful. Come on. Because I was steeped in sin, and if it wasn't for his mercy, then I would still be steeped in sin. I thank God that he is merciful. I thank God for his love that he has showed me. I thank God that he has never left any of us in this place. I thank God that he felt that your life and my life was worth his life. I thank God for all that he has done. And we see what is going on there in Philippians chapter 2. We see it. We have lived it. And we know what it's like for God to be there for us, to experience his mercy, his forgiveness that came from the cross of Jesus Christ. Well, Christ wants us to show that same love and that same compassion to other people. When we reflect what we reflect from day to day, it should be what Jesus Christ has done in us. That's what we should reflect. That's what we should be putting out to people. That's what we should be doing. And it, and it goes on and it, and it talks about and how Jesus Christ is that greatest example that we have. How he is loved. He made himself a servant for other people. Christ wants us to have compassion on people. And I got a question for you this morning. Do you truly value people? Do you truly value people? What about your family? You know, sometimes, sometimes it seems like the hardest people to love in your life is the closest to you. You know what I'm saying? You just you just wanna you just wanna beat them sometimes, you know? <laughs> and, Sometimes they just drive you crazy. And I know, like husband and wife and stuff, um, man, you know, so, sometimes there's things that just, that just drive you crazy uh, about each other. That's just, the, that's just the way it is. Do you value your family? Do you love them like Christ loved the church? The, the sad thing is, is many times we have more mercy, more forgiveness for people outside of our family than we do for people inside our family. That's the truth. That's the truth. You know, as my, my daughter getting married here in just, I think it's less than four months now, isn't it? Less than four months. I think I'm going to be the first father, 25 years old, and their, and their, and their daughter getting married. That's crazy. Um, but, and, <laughs> and, and I've, been, I've just been talking to Josiah um, here and there uh, just about marriage uh, different things, all the wisdom that I have, of course. And uh, just talking to him, you know, and I, I shared with him how the Word of God teaches that in the marriage, the man will suffer much. And <laughs> well, that's what Paul said was in the Bible. I don't know. But I, that's what he told me. I'm just going from what he said. Um, but... <laughs> 
you know what? It's like I can only hear the guys laughing on that one. I don't know. It's just like, but um, but that that's in case you don't know, that's actually not in the Bible. Okay, just like, I just want to. That's on tape, right? That I yeah, that's not in the Bible. Okay, and, and so and so, but I I told him I said, listen, I said, man, you you wanna you wanna um, do it right, then just remember that you're never right. It's true. That's, that's some good teaching right there. Yeah. I said, you're never right. Always be the first to say you're sorry. He's like, oh, I just don't know if I can do that. And I, was like, I said, well, you're in for a long haul. And so, and so I just teaching him of, you know, obviously there's going to be dynamics between the two of them that sometimes they're just going to bash heads. You know, sometimes they're going to they're gonna have some conflict. But... It all comes down to a choice. Do you choose to value people? Do you choose to value your spouse? Do you choose to value your children? It's a choice. It all comes down to a choice. Forget about the feelings. Make it a choice that you're going to do as Christ did and become that servant even to death, even to death on a cross. That you're going to be that, and you're going to live that example that Jesus would give you with your family. Now that, oh my goodness, that could be so hard, can it? It could be so difficult to do that. But I'm telling you, how many know there would be a lot of family situations, a lot of marriages that would be better if they just decided to take Jesus Christ's example and value people the way Jesus valued people. To value their spouse, their family, like Jesus valued people. What about your friends? Are your friends around you? Are they your friends simply because they benefit you, because they're a, a good thing for you, or are you a benefit to them? Do you value them as your friendship? Do you care for them? Do you truly care uh, uh, about the, them, their soul, their person, or do you just take advantage of your friendships? Do you take advantage of it? Do you value people? Do you value everyone in this world, everybody you walk by, everybody you see? You know, it's really important because there's a lot of people that only see someone's actions instead of his or her soul. It's truth, isn't it? It's really easy to form a bias towards people simply because of their actions. But many times we allow ourselves to forget that they are a child of God. That Jesus Christ died for them. And they have a soul that Jesus Christ wants to save. You know, my eyes were open as we began to go to the inner city of Chicago and begin to minister to, to young people that were just in situations, honestly, that I've never seen in my life. You know, I read, um, I read, said, I think it was today, I, I read something that, um, for the kids um, in Chicago, that by kindergarten, most kids in Chicago have learned how to dodge bullets. That's pretty sad, isn't it? And we see, we see this as we go in, and we we're passing out some invitations to an event where we we're going to present Jesus and telling people about Jesus and stuff. And many of the kids that were junior high, even into high school, um, were coming up and saying, so, so what, what time is this? In? And they kept going and saying it. I was just like, man, it's, it's all right there on the, I mean, it's really plain. It starts at 6 o'clock, you know, kind of thing. And, and they kept going and coming up to me. And, many, I mean, several just kept coming and asked me questions about what. And um, the missionary, Brother Moody, he's a great man of God, came up. And he said, do you know why they're doing that? And I said, no. I, I was like, I was trying to figure out why they're asking me these questions. And he says, uh, because they can't read. And, and I said, so they're not in school? He said, oh, no. He said, they've been in school since kindergarten. And he said, but a majority of them are junior high, high school, and still can't even read and still can't do it. They've grown up in a situation, in a place, and you begin to get a little bit more of a heart. He said, you know... And he said, before I came into the inner city, he said, I used to, I used to have a, um, really a wrong opinion um, about them. And he said, he said that uh, once I figured out that they had no hope, 
And I began to think about how would I live if I had no hope? He said, my heart began to open up to them more and more and more. And he said, how, how are they going to get a job if they can't even read here or there? How are they going to do this? How are they going to do this? And we know that there's been many people who have overcome and God's done that. And we thank God for that. But it was only through Jesus Christ that they were able to do that. So we need to stop looking at people's actions and start looking at them as a child of God and that he or she has a soul. I'm, hey, I'm kind of used to it. I'm used to it, a bias because I'm from West Virginia. And so, and I still got teeth, you know. And so, so, so that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. And so I'm used to, you know, people, you know, sometimes, oh, you're, you know, West Virginia and your last name is Snotgrass. No, it's not Snotgrass. It's Snotgrass. No, it's Snotgrass. No, it's Snotgrass. No, it's Snotgrass. You know, all this, you know, you name it. It just goes on and on. I think one of my favorite ones when uh, I was getting made fun of in grade school and, and he said, hey, Jeremy. And they, I said, yeah. And they, they looked down and they took a, a bunch of grass and they blew their nose in it. Look, it's not grass. And I was like, yeah. I was actually, that was pretty creative, actually. So, but, um, but anyway, and so we've got to realize, we've got to value people the way Jesus would value them. To get, listen, we were no better. We were no better. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We need to value people, not form unhealthy biases towards them but to love them and value them as a child of God. God's very creation. Do you, do you only see them the way you want to see them? Or do you see them like Jesus sees them? God, open our eyes. Let us value people. Let us love people enough, God, to reflect you in everything that we do to this world, to these people around us. You know, you look in verses 5 through 8, it says, and it says, in relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in, made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. When you look at what Jesus did, he gave us everything. This is the example that he said. This is what he said. Look at what I've done for you. Look at how I gave myself. He gave everything to us. Now you do the same. Go out and reflect who I am. Reflect who I am in you, what I've done in your life. He put himself aside. Being very nature God, he did not use that to his advantage. And put that aside that the very people that he created, he made himself subject to them, to the cross. Think about that. That's who he is. That's what he did. He gave his life for us. He is the greatest example, the greatest example that we could have. And you know what the problem is today? The problem, one of the biggest problems we have today is a lot of times the church, the church looks no different than the world. How many know that's a really big problem? When the church looks no different than the world, then we're reflecting the same thing. And if we're reflecting the same thing, then what are we showing them? We're showing them a gospel that means nothing, a gospel that has no impact. A gospel that has no change if we're acting and living the same as the world. What, what, is it, what does it do when we begin to, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we begin to line our spirit and our soul up with what Philippians chapter 2 says and we begin to live that example that Jesus Christ gave and begin to remember and remind ourselves all that God has done for us, what does that do? When we begin to live that way, when we begin to live that way as God's people, it will draw our believers to him. I promise you, I promise you, it will draw on believers when we begin to live like Christ did. 
when we can look in the mirror and, and our life and our soul reflects who Jesus Christ is and the attitude of being a servant, of sacrifice for other people, when we begin to live that way, it will draw people to him. I promise you, it will happen. It will draw on believers. It will also bring unity. Unity in the body of Christ. You know, I'm so thankful. Uh, we've been here a little over nine years and I'm so thankful for the love of this church. And, you know, honestly, the last nine years, every one of the business meetings that I've been to, I mean, there's times where I went into business meetings in the past and churches in the past that I was scared what was going to happen. Come on now, how many have been in one of those? You know what I'm saying? You know, I was scared Brother Rodney was going to, uh, you know, step up again and say, you know, I'm just messing. He's awesome. And... <laughs> And there's been times, I'm just telling you, there was no unity in the church. And honestly, it was all based out of individual preferences, what they wanted. And instead of allowing the love of Jesus Christ and the example of who Jesus Christ is to rule in their life, they were more concerned about what they wanted than the body of Christ. But I thank God that that's never, ever happened at this church. I know the youth pastor here, he causes some issues. Um, but, um, but, uh, but, everybody else, but everybody else is good. And, and so we look at that and we see, and I thank God that our church is a reflection of that. But when we live and we reflect Jesus, it's going to bring unity. It's going to set us apart. Like I said, the, we we live too much like the world. We act too much like the world. But when we begin to love like Jesus, live as example, then guess what? Guess what? It is going to set us apart, not in a bad way, but in a great way. Set us apart just like a light on top of the hill. It's going to set us apart. And they're going to, I'm telling you, people can spot a true living Christian just like that. I'm, I'm telling you, it's the truth. They can do it. When we reflect Jesus, it makes us more and more like him. And that's exactly what Philippians chapter 2 tells us to do. Remember what he's done. Remember what he's done for you. Now do the same thing for other people. That's what Jesus has taught us. We should be striving towards God's ways and his standards in our life. We should want to reflect him in every avenue of our life. So let me ask you, when you look, when you look at your reflection, what do you see? When you look in the mirror, and I'm not talking about the, the, uh, the outward appearance, but when you look in the mirror and you look deep into your eyes and you look into your soul, do you reflect Jesus? Or is there some areas, as you look back over 2016, are there some areas in your life that you can say, you know what, God, I need your help. Because if I have to really be honest, I didn't do too well in this area. When you look in the mirror, when you look at yourself, do you reflect Jesus? What do you see? Does it line up with what Philippians chapter Two said, or does it line up with me, myself, and I, chapter two? What does it line up with when you look at yourself and you allow the Holy Spirit to begin to examine you? What does it look like? If you bow your heads and close your eyes this morning, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to ask, I don't know who's all in here today, but we talked about testimonies of the goodness of Jesus Christ, the goodness of who he is. We talked about his sacrifice, how he came and made himself, made himself as a man to die to shed his blood on the cross for our sins. 
And with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask this morning, if you're in here and honestly you said, my reflection does not reflect God, I might know who he is, I might know about him, but I have to be, if I have to be honest, I am not living for him. Jesus Christ is not my Lord and Savior. And I can look and I can see the fruit in my life. I can see my actions. And it is clear. It is clear that I need Jesus Christ to save me, to forgive me of my sins, to set me apart, to set me on that new path. If that's you, will you just simply raise your hand this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In this place, if you're here, even if you didn't raise your hand, I want you to know that God is there. That no matter where you call out to him, it doesn't matter where you're at, he is always there. He is always there. And when you cry out to him and say, God, I need you, I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior, that he, your sins will be forgiven and a new life will start. And I encourage you, if you're not following God, make that decision today. Make that decision today. Yesterday, as I was studying and last night, as I was praying, I was just, God, how, how do I... How do I close this out? How do I, how do I end this this morning? And I'm going to ask everybody to stand this morning. In just a moment, we're going to, the band's going to go through this song. But this morning, I'm going to ask whether you want to come to the altars, whether you just want to stay right where you're at. It doesn't matter. But this morning, what I believe Jesus wants us to do is I believe that he wants us to take a look inside. And not only for us to take a look inside, but to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to look inside of us. And so what we're going to do is we sing this song. This is what I'm going to ask. And like I said, you can come to altars, you can stay, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to ask this. Can we just take a few moments this morning? And ask God, God, what does my reflection look like to you? What does my reflection look like to you? And can you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning? At this moment, this time, let this be an example of what we should do every single day. We should find that time to say, Holy Spirit, look at me. Holy Spirit, show me. Convict me. Disciple me. We need to take these moments in our life every day and we need to look up at the Heavenly Father and say, do I reflect you? And how do you see my reflection? So as we sing this song, let's ask ourselves this. Let's ask God, how do I reflect you, Lord? What do I look like? And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. I need you more. More than yesterday.
God, today, God, our prayer, our prayer, Lord God, is that this year in 2017, that we will reflect you in our life, Lord. That this year, Lord Jesus, we're going to follow your example, your lead, how you taught us, how you showed us of what it means, what it means, Lord God, to love. And God, I pray we reflect that to the world around us, that this year as we go out, that our family, our friends, all the people around us, Lord, that God, their lives will be impacted, impacted by the reflection that we give of you to this world, Lord Jesus. God, let us reflect you. Let us reflect you in everything that we do. And God, every day, God, it's a hard prayer. Lord God, to pray for your conviction. But God, I pray that we will, Father, seek you for conviction to mold us, to make us more like you, Jesus. God, let us in 2017 reflect you. Reflect you every single day. God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you today. We love you. These altars are always open. We love you. Be blessed.